Hello everybody and welcome to today's video and we have got a unique and awesome video for you. Uh, we are going to talk about through lines and can you use through lines to build your tree? All right, so what I've done is I've taken this magic time travel machine, you know, I contacted Tesla, you know, through the you know spirit world or whatever, and he gave me a time machine, and we've ported back two years to before I had this DNA surprise. So life is good, <laughs> no emotional baggage, you know, it's two years ago, which means my tree is now this, all right? I am the son of Dwight Basie. All right, and my mother is a you know son or daughter of Tom Siler, and this is my family tree. And I spent tens of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of hours, crossed every T, dotted every I. This baby is pristine. I've got my birth certificate, his you know birth and death certificate, his birth and death certificate, his birth and death certificate, his birth and death certificate. I've actually got Williams. Uh, birth and death certificate and Isaac's death certificate. So I've got all that information, wills, obituaries, everything linking all the family members. I know some people say, hey, if you don't have three pieces of information or five or 10, everybody has their different standards. I don't care what your genealogical standard is. This tree passes that test and more with flying colors. So much so, this tree, I t uh, submitted it and became a part of the Sons of the American Revolution where their professional genealogists reviewed the tree, every node from myself to that person to verify that it's right. Okay, so this is the way it was two years and a couple of months ago. Now, what did I do? I decided I'm gonna write a book so I take this DNA test. And I get, what everybody else gets is I get this match list. Now, when I say this, I have to put a caveat. I can't go two years back on this because I can't make people disappear. But two years ago, my closest match was somebody down here, uh, I think Water Nolan at 118 and Dorothy Collins at 170. Okay, So that means that everybody else from here all the way up to the top was not in my match list two years ago. Most of these, as you notice, they don't, like there's my mother's side for my daughter, matches my mom too. But look at these, how many of these do you see say mother's side? I'm scrolling down some more. There's one, two, there's a few more as we get down here. All right, so these people were people that either I bought tests for or they bought tests in order to help me figure out who my biological father was. Or they're one of the few that popped in the tree that got the whole thing started. <laughs> so I'm rocking along. I've taken this DNA test. There's a few people there. Now, through lines wasn't out, not yet. They had DNA circles. But we're going to look at it with through lines because through lines, that's the new and updated product from Ancestry, right? So we're going to take a look at it. We're going to look at a couple of people. So we're going to, and I'm going to expand this on out. <clears throat> Remember I said I joined SAR through Placard Dietrich Seiler. Uh, through lines only goes to the fifth great grandparent, so that's Jacob O. So we're gonna look at Jacob O. And then we're gonna come down here a little further and go into this area. And we're gonna come to uh, John Bennett. All right, we're gonna look at the through lines for these two people and just kind of look at it. So first, let's start with a close relative right here. <clears throat> you know, we've got uh, parent, grandparent, great, second great grandparent. We're gonna do John Amos Bennett. All right, look at this. Boy, howdy, can there be any doubt? We come in here, we got nine, 17, eight, you know, seven. That is what you would expect coming up here to a second great grandfather. It's not out of bounds as far as, you know, the CMS. And so you think, okay, look at this. You know, there's five DNA matches here. This is pretty solid. And then we come over here to Jacob. Well, now Jacob, we get even more. There's 19 DNA matches. All right. So now what you have to remember is I spent absolutely years and lots of dollars making sure that this was well documented. I have, you know, my birth certificate of my mom. She later took a DNA test. There's no question about this link. I have the adoption records that say he signed over parental rights to my mom to the rights, you know, became Linda Wright because she was adopted a right. And I have birth and death, birth and death, birth and death, land records, wills, probates, all land records, everything all the way up to this Jacob O. Well, they have their trees. Now, one may not have it, or two may not have it. You can see, like right in here, you can see their uh, birth or death certificate uh, is right here for that person. So you can tell that they've 
probably documented their tree fairly well. And you've got all of these people, 19 of them that go to Jacob O. I know my line's pristine. So what happens? I know that they match, okay? So let's go and open up Siler. All right, so I intersect all of those people right here. I've got 19 DNA matches that connect to me through Jacob O. That means this line, Jacob, William, Weimer, Calvin, William, Thomas, my mom and myself, there is this line. These people are DNA connected to Jacob O, and then Jacob O went down to those 19 people. So as a result of that, I put this nice little DNA verified, and I went through all of the DNA matches to find out, could I find matches that proved each one of these people were connected? Did I, did I go up and through these people? Because remember, I've already crossed the T's and dotted the I's that these are all connected to each other. Okay, so there's not a question of that. The question then becomes, if there's a DNA match and they connect to a person in the tree, either one of these people or one of these people up above them, like in the case here, I've got some Edmund Basies, John IB Basies. If I connect to those people, then I mean, I have to connect on up and then down to them. So I put DNA verified. All right. So that's how I thought. And that's how many of you think. And so let's take another look at through lines. Look at this nice tight through lines right here. Look at all this. This is very well documented pretty close, only a second great grandfather. So they only go up a few to him, only up a few to him. I go up there, younger people. <laughs> and then over here, Jacob O. Siler, you know, through that same line. Well, now if we look at that, I've got a Siler, you know, people connecting to the Siler. And then uh, the Bennett's, they were the same family because they remarried, but you got Bennett's right here, the Susie Bennett, got the Bennett family line. Uh, you know, so got John Amos Bennett and his descendants. And I've got the Silers there. So this Thomas Siler, that's pretty solid, right? And I did the same thing for each one of those. So not only did I have pristine trees that would pass any genealogical standard, now I had DNA matches from my DNA match list that connected me to and through these people. Boom! Yeah, I got it, right? We can just rest easy. So I'm rocking along, and uh, a month or so goes by. And, you know, I'm checking the DNA matches, and what is this? I guess somebody popped in. It was M.M., managed by Lena Bennett. Now, ironically, this Mary Schaefer and this M.M., they're the same person. 467, 469. Uh, it says 27, 26 segments. So I guess there was one more segment. <laughs> Somehow, one less segment and, and two more Cinemorgans. So there is a small variance when they do the testing because it's the same person. This is an ex-daughter-in-law. So in order to have control of her data for her research, uh, she took the test again. So both of these are the same person, but this popped up at 469 Cinemorgans. That's pretty darn close. So immediately I'm thinking, where does this person connect? Okay, the 469, we're talking about what, a half first cousin or a second cousin? All right, so let's look at the tree here because again, we know this tree is right. We've got DNA to match it. So, you know, if they match through my dad, then they're a sibling. And right here is first cousins. And we're looking here at second cousins. Well, they're either under the first cousins or second cousins. So I know that they should match me somewhere underneath one of these eight people. Or actually groups of four. But in case, you know, one of them had an affair or something else happened. One of these eight people tie me over to this uh, Mary Schaefer. So I'm trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out. I finally get a hold, you know, of the ex-daughter-in-law. They still have, you know, a good relationship. So it's kind of odd as <laughs> a test there. Uh, I'm sure there's a reason. But she gives me the tree. She talks to Mary. Mary talks to her, shares the tree with me. And I make this tree. And I start building the tree online. And I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how Mary Schaefer... Schaefer connects to all these people. It just does not connect. All right, rocking along, rocking along, and uh, you know everything seems pretty good. There's nothing unusual there. And then what happens? Well, I get another match. I get this Nancy Robledo right here, right above 483. 483, what is that? That's another person should match in there. So I contact them. And I get their tree. 
these trees don't match. And neither tree matches any of the surnames all the way out to here, in case there was something weird. None of these surnames, none of these, none of these names mean anything to either one of them. But I did notice a couple of names of theirs intersected as far as the surnames, but not the people. Couldn't match the people. They couldn't match it. They didn't know of the other people. They didn't know if they were related or not. Uh, each one of them had some people named Brown. Each one of them had somebody named McFarlane, but it didn't match. So I'm rocking along, and then boom, this one comes in. 840 centimorgans. So now I've got three matches that are above. 840 centimorgans. All right, that has to be a first cousin. Uh, it has to be that or an aunt or uncle. I mean, that's just way, way too close. And so if, <laughs> if it's an aunt or uncle, it has to be a sibling of uh, my dad or my mom, uh, you know, if it, or if it's an aunt or uncle, if it's a first cousin, it has to be a child of one of their brother and sisters. Well, I knew her brother here, and they didn't have any kids unless they had one that, you know, they didn't know of and I had just found. But I suspected this person right here, this Thomas Seiler, he had his first children in 1917, 1918 through 20, he had four. And then later, my mother, you know, 1943, and then later another daughter in 1955. And the, the older children actually had children and one had a grandchild in 1942 that was actually older than my mom. He had a grandchild older than his daughter. And, it, and then the other daughter even more so because she was born in 55. So, you know, there was some weird stuff here and his children went from out in Kentucky uh, through Oklahoma to California and I figure okay this has to be through him and that's why you know my mom ended up taking a test to try and figure out how this person was related well you notice it doesn't say mother's side so some people have asked me how does it say mother's side that's an automatic generated thing by ancestry if your mother or father takes the test and they know that because the Cinnamorgan 3471 that can only be a parent child okay so I put female so it knew mother if I had put male it put father so when I do that, and it didn't have that here, I knew that this had to be on my dad's side. So what that meant, okay, it had to be on my dad's side, that meant that there had to be another sibling to Dwight and his two brothers, which means either Otha had a child someplace that nobody knew about, uh, or Margaret, something happened here. There, there was a problem. So... What I did was then I'm named after the brothers of Dwight, Larry and Dwayne, and Larry, still being alive, took the DNA test for me. And when he took the DNA test, he didn't match him either. And so what that told me was Dwight was not my father. And that's when everything started to unravel. And I'm looking at this going, wait a minute, you matched all of these people through DNA. How can they match you with DNA and then you get a totally different father? Well, I'm going to talk about this. We're going to use the Jacob O example. And there were some clues in here that, you know, I could have picked up on. Uh, one of them was like here, I have my mother and Thomas and all these, and I had no offshoot branches. Now, this one showed up one night, and it was actually after... I had worked through the DNA surprise with my dad and finding out that Dwight was not actually my biological father. So I'm sitting there one night and up pops a notification on my phone. It says, we've identified a first cousin match for you via Thomas Seiler. Well, I'm thinking, wow, okay, so this, this is the break I needed because I don't know anything about that part of the family. Other, I mean, I've got the tree information going my mom and up, but I don't know the extended family. This is an opportunity to shore that up and perhaps find out if my mother's mother is still alive, my grandmother. So I pull this up and I look, and let's give you a couple of seconds to see what you see. So I'm going to give you a couple seconds. Uh, imagine Jeopardy theme song playing here. I'm not going to play it because I don't want to get copyright <laughs> noticed. You know, da, 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 da. Okay, there you go. You see it? 13 Cinemorgans. Now look over here. 12, 17, 8. All right. Well, what's the problem, Larry? Well, the problem is these people go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 up to Jacob. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to Jacob. All right, 12, 17, and 8. This person, my MRCA is not Jacob. My MRCA is Thomas. One, two, one, two, 13. That's the same as you would expect from a distant cousin. That I knew immediately. I knew immediately that she was not a first cousin. Even though it says half first cousin, was not a first cousin. And because of that, I knew that Tom Seiler was not my mother's father. And it's like, well, is there any way to prove that beyond just an anomaly here? Well, yes, we went to her profile, because remember, my mother's taken a test by this point. We go to her public profile, and there it says mine, 13 Cinemorgans. Now we're gonna pick my mom out of the list, Linda Perryman. Not a DNA match. Okay, I wanna say this again. Not a, we know that she's taking a DNA test because she matches me. Okay, I show up as 13 centimorgans. My mom doesn't match at all, does not match her at all. So, what does that mean? That means she's a DNA match, but she doesn't match through my mother, which means that's right, she matches through my father, my biological father. So, all these people on this side that we see here. I do match with Jacob Seiler and the patriotic ancestor, Placard Dietrich Seiler, but not through the Seiler family. There is another connection on my father's side, and I haven't found it because I haven't been looking for it. But I know it has to be right in here because it's the MRCA for all these people, and because it's up here at the fifth great-grandfather. Once you get beyond that to the sixth, the likelihood of them showing up that many generations apart because fifth great grandfather is seventh generation at the sixth and seventh generation you start dropping off where you're not a match so to be beyond this would be the eighth generation which means that i'm probably not going to be a dna match so this is the extent so right in here they all meet here i probably fall underneath jacob o somewhere through some line some line i have comes up someplace yet undocumented i come up not through my mom, through my biological father, come up to Jacob O or maybe to Placard, but definitely, or maybe even under one of these others. Uh, but if that was the case, one of these others would be, you know, in the 20s or 30s rather than all in the teens and like six. All right. So Ancestry took this moment to <laughs> take a break. Let's see if it comes on the reload here. So I make a video and it says, up oh, that break time. And so they must be updating something. So uh, we'll go back. Uh, the other stuff that we all pulled. That's why I try to pull stuff up in advance just in case that happens. So what does this mean? Okay, we've said we've shown that Dwight's not my biological father and Thomas is not my mom. So my mom has a DNA surprise here. I have a DNA surprise here. That means this part of my tree, right here, this top one half of the tree, cut, gone, boom, by 50%. And then my mom's you know, because she's the other 50%, well, half of hers, this Tom Seiler, this part of the tree, all oh, boom, gone. 75% of this tree, gone. It is not my biological family tree. Now, what is interesting is, and as we showed right here, I've got through line matches as close as the second great grandfather and a bunch of them right here. All right. And that match, that was to the Bennett. The other was to the Silers. So that would make you think that Tom Silers uh, connected, right? No, you can't make that assumption. And that is the moral of today's show. Just because through lines shows you this massive amount of DNA connections, whether it be five here or in the case of uh, the one with Jacob O, which is no longer showing up. <laughs> Maybe I can go to through lines and it'll pull up through lines for me. Yeah, let's go to Jacob. Uh, is there a search feature yet? Nope, not a search feature. Looking for the search feature ancestry when you get time. All right, so we scroll on down here to the person. Do, 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 do. Where is that? Jacob O. So 19 matches, and you can see that right here. 19 DNA matches come through Jacob O. And we have all these here with John Amos. So Silers, Bennett's, all really, you know, Siler, Bennett. This, you know, Siler and Bennett right here, Psalm Siler, it's got to be right. No, it's not. It is not right. Okay? So when we start laying the DNA numbers on top of it, start triangulating this 13 centimorgans for a first cousin, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. Now, I didn't notice here because the stacking, it wasn't as obvious. 
Over here, the stacking is obvious. So one of the things I recommend is go through your uh, fourth and fifth great grandparents and look at those lines and see if you notice stacking like this. If you live inside the United States, and these ancestors did because, you know, Picard was a revolutionary patriot, and, you know, Jacob and all these people were inside the United States, there have been descendants test. That's, it's out so much now, there will be some people who tested. If they don't show up, there is something unusually wrong with that part of the tree. Now, it could be, I mean, in your situation, maybe it's that rare one in a thousand that has a stack like this that there just wasn't anybody that made it you know only one child of one child of one child and uh, there just weren't any other child children and it went down to you it can happen and i'm sure there's some people watching at some point will watch this and yes that's my tree but if you see this kind of stacking of names and it goes this far back to a fifth grade grandparent and you don't see other things coming to the side like this there is a problem right there. There is a problem. If you see the cinnamorgans, now these all triangulate correctly, you know, that distance, seven up and seven down, 12, 17, and eight, that's normal. But if it goes two up and two down and it's 13, then that's a problem. Okay? So if you have this close relative that is a distant match, 13, 6, 12, whatever, and they're supposed to connect in here or even through here, that's a problem. If you have stacking, that's a problem. All right, those are the things to do. So, all right, that was a fun trip uh, backwards. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to travel forward. <laughs> now, it's ironic because the other says 2020, this says 2019. We're traveling forward in time to 2019. So now this is the current tree. And this is a DNA verified tree. Now, Remember when I said that the other one was documented to the T? Any genealogical standard, it would pass. Every T crossed, every I dotted, everything was pristine, documents at the wazoo, okay? Now, there is not a piece of paper trail on this planet that shows that Larkin Brown is my biological father. There is not a piece of paper on this planet that shows that Robert Cowan Perryman is my mother's father. And there never will be. I mean, you can't retroactively do that. So there will never be that documentation. Why? Well, Robert Cowan Perryman, his wife died in an automobile accident while he was the driver. Obviously, that was an emotional toe. Daughter was hurt. She lived for a while, later died of pneumonia. Okay. He had nothing he felt to live for. Didn't care whether he lived or died. If he died, he felt he would be in heaven and see his family. Uh, war was going on, so he signed up in the Navy to participate in World War II. Went through eight weeks of boot camp. Went to Oklahoma to visit his brother and his nephew, whom he cared about very much. Took a picture of him. He was there for one day. On that one day, he met Trevor Marie. I'm shipping out tomorrow. I may never come back. They had a relationship for that one time and one time only. My mother and her twin brother were born as a result of that relationship. Now, the irony is I actually have a picture of Robert Cowan Perryman on that day when he came back to Oklahoma. Uh, let's see if it's in his uh, profile. Do I have that in his profile? If it does, that'd be kind of a... I probably do. There's everything else here. Uh, let's see. Robert Callan Perryman looking for a Navy picture. Him in a Navy uniform. Oh, there it is. So this... And I don't know how many people can say this. This was in Oklahoma City, and this is his brother. This is his nephew. And they took a picture. He was there after he finished his basic training shipping off literally and this was either the same day or the next morning after he had met my grandmother Trevor Murray. He never knew about my mom. Nobody in the family ever knew about it until after I had this you know DNA surprise with my father. I said you know what 
I can't trust any paper. I don't care what the paper is, what the paper says. I don't trust it. So for those who say, hey, I've got this perfect tree. If you haven't triangulated all the nodes with DNA, uh, I'm not convinced. You know, it's not worth the paper it's written on. And I can say that because I've got a paper that says, I'm Larry Jones. My father is Joe Jones. I've got another birth certificate that says, I'm the son of Dwight Basie. And in fact, DNA proves and triangulates that I am the son of Larkin Brown. My mother has the adoption records. And she has a birth certificate that has a totally different father name. And then an affidavit from the mom saying it was Thomas Seiler. Thomas Seiler saying it was indeed his children and giving up parental rights. When in fact, it's Robert Cowan Perryman. So when you come up and you see through lines and you have all these matches and it makes it look like your tree is correct because you've worked hard, you've crossed every T, you've got a birth certificate here, you've got the adoption records here, you've got the birth and death certificates, you've got all this information, but if you can't triangulate like this 13 centimorgans and make it fit, there's a problem. If you got stacking, there's a problem. So you can't just simply trust that through lines is giving you these matches and add these people to the tree because that is going to create bad trees. Even though these are DNA matches, okay? Even though their common MRCA is this John Amos Bennett, because they're out at 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, remember the other one was out there at 7 and had the same Cinemorgans. So they may connect up here one or two generations above. We don't know. Now look at this one. One, two, three, four, five, seven centimorgans. So that inclines me to believe that my connection, besides being over on my father's side, not my mother's, would go on up. Because remember, I'm connected to her with all these people, and she's connected through my father's side. So it's not my mother's side. My father connects somewhere into the Bennett family. So how do we go about finding that out? Okay, so we've proven that you can't simply just take a tree. You can't, it doesn't matter how well you've documented it. I mean, you, I, I, I really want to re-emphasize this part. I spent 30 years, tens of thousands of hours, tens of thousands of dollars, buying things, traveling, doing stuff, making sure that I'd gotten every record that was possible to verify everything. There was no way anybody was going to disprove these connections. I even took a DNA test. I got a DNA match list, and I was able to match those people. Look at all these people. Match these people up through John Amos Bennett. So that meant that the Bennett's were you know DNA verified, right? So that meant you know Tom Siler, the Bennett's up here, and to the people I matched through. Okay, so this line had a DNA match to those people, so that's verified, right? No, it's not. That is not DNA verified. That was me not understanding DNA. And to be fair, most people didn't at this time because it was kind of new. <laughs> and so we were all kind of learning together. But when these other people popped in and they were really close, it proved after my mother had taken a test and Dwight's brother had taken a test that, nope, uh, <laughs> there is... There's a problem here, okay? So found a new bio father, found a new bio father for my mom, and as a result, we ended up with the correct people, and that was through the triangulation. So what do we do? Well, first off, the moral of this video, and you can share this with anybody else you feel like needs to understand the moral of this video, you cannot just take through lines and put it into your tree. You cannot take these people and document these lines. Okay, some of these are private, some of these are public. You can't just take this information and add, go up to John Amos Bennett, Obedience, Margaret, Aura, William, and Wilma. You cannot just add those people to your tree. And when you come over here to the DNA match list, remember how we talked about in the previous video, you can't just click here and link them to your tree. Because if you do, you're making a mistake. You're just building on to a mistake. And had I not had the random people pop in close, I would be right now documenting those people in my tree 
and verifying it and creating all sorts of problems down the road. So what I'm going to tell you, ask you, you know, and show you later is when you have something like this and you believe you have the tree, take the DNA match list and triangulate. Can you verify mother? Maybe through an uncle or a grandparent. Can you verify them through the next node up? And all the descendants, are they triangulating? Do you have to go all the way up here to find somebody that's related? If you do, there may be a problem. If you have to go further up, and maybe you still don't have anybody, there's definitely an anomaly. Now, that being the case, there are exceptions to that rule. There, you know, there are groups of people, especially those outside the United States that haven't taken DNA tests. There are groups inside the United States that haven't taken DNA tests. So it is the general rule. There is no absolute rule in genealogy. There, there is not one. All right. So you can't say this is always this way. This is always that way. Now, what I'm going to do, and I redid my tree. I put the Basie family tree out there. I linked my DNA back to this tree the way it was two years ago with what I thought it was two years ago. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do a little mini series and we're going to go through and we're going to say onto the DNA matches, you notice that there's no groupings. We're going to do the whole clustering thing again because we did this a year ago, a little over a year ago, uh, and it's real important. But we're going to go through this time and we're going to look at it with the eyes that we had from two years ago. We're going to look at it with this basic tree that has all those DNA matches, okay? And we're going to go through and we're going to lay over our DNA match list on top of this tree until we find errors. And once we find mistakes, we're going to reconcile those until we can start verifying. And we're going to go through the process of, okay, once I find that Dwight's not my father, how do I go about finding my father? What steps did I take? And we're going to follow through that. And, and it's going to be a bit because it took quite a while, but we don't have to show everything. We're going to shortcut that. But we're going to go through. And again, I just want to, I, I want to re, 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 re emphasize. It doesn't matter how pristine your paper trail is. It doesn't matter that you have DNA matches that lay on top of that pristine tree. If you cannot triangulate that tree, it is still suspect. Now, that being said, I do have the four-part series. It goes triangulation, making the tree. You already have a tree, so you can go from there and go to the triangulation. You know, because you've already done your sourcing for your tree, so do the clustering and do the triangulation. I have to say this, folks. This video, while it serves as a, you know, hey, don't just add stuff to your tree. It creates bad trees and is really creating a lot more bad trees. Because while this is a good tree, the misunderstanding perpetuates bad trees and creates even more bad trees and then links people to that bad tree more emphatically creating that it's a bad tree and perpetuating the problem. When you start triangulating, uh, don't do that part unless you feel you're ready for the consequences. Because my experience has been, and also according to a poll in the Facebook group, 50% of the respondents had a DNA surprise at either the parent level, which I did here, or the grandparent level, which was right here. And some of us had it in both. 50% of the respondents. So I know in the triangulation video, there's this big warning sign that I popped up and said, warning, 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 don't go past here. I know this sounds funny, but I'm serious. And I'm going to say that again. Genealogy is a passion for many of us. It's something we do. It links us to the past. But when you take it to this level and you have you know, crossed your T's, dotted your I's, and you lay the DNA on top like I've done right here, and then you go back and you triangulate on top of that, there's a good chance you're going to find something out at a parent or grandparent level, about a 50% chance. So just bear that in mind. So we're going to go through that. We're going to have, you know, like I said, the little mini series. But if you already know how to do that, be forewarned that uh, 
you know I've taken breaks from doing the videos from time to time because there's an emotional baggage with finding out the new reality. If you triangulate folks, there could be a new reality. If you're like me and you want the truth regardless, then you know be ready to follow the other series. And you do that by subscribing to the channel, click the bell notification, you'll know as soon as that video comes out or that group of videos comes out and you'll be able to watch that. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You think people need to hear this, that they should not be just adding stuff to through lines and a demonstration of why, firsthand why, then uh, share this video with them and let's see what we can do about cleaning up all the trees and so that you know, we can make better trees for everybody to build off of. Um, once we all start doing this and we all triangulate, the trees are going to become really, really good. And when we do that, Ancestry is going to be able to provide us some really, really amazing information. Right now, they have to deal with all of our mistakes because right now I'm linked to this misinformation. And as a result, They've given me misinformation, and these people now see me connected through here. And these people are liable to be connecting to me through here if they just blindly connect. Hopefully, they're watching this video and they don't do that. But we're going to leave it connected to this tree, my DNA connected to this tree, exactly as it was two years ago when I first took my DNA test. And we're going to go from here with a short mini-series on how to you know triangulate how to verify your trees so that in the end at least this portion right here you know the grandparents your great and the second great grandparents from this level right in here we're going to help you get as a clean of a tree as we possibly can thank you i appreciate you all for listening and we'll talk to you again very soon